Hey guys, every once in a while we're going to share with you some products that I use on the stream that I really like and I really enjoy that get me through my day of guiding or the day fishing. Um, I've been fishing and, and guiding in this wader for the last two months. It's a very comfortable wader and that's really important to me when I'm out there guiding and when I'm fishing to have a wader that's really comfortable, that's really breathable as well. It feels really good when you bend your knees or when you go down to pick up a fish or release a fish. Um, they feel really comfortable. Um, it's got a, a bunch of different features. It's got some pockets here, um, a tippet dispenser. It's got a pocket here. It's got another pocket right here. It's also got hand warmers right here. The Sonic Pro wader is pretty interesting. They don't use any stitching on the wader. They sonically weld the seams together with a high frequency sound. So you don't get those uh, little pinhole leaks, which is kind of neat, you know, at the seams. Um, it's also got some really nice gravel guards to uh, protect my laces so the rocks don't get into my boots and that sort of thing as well. But the Reddington Sonic Pro, what a great wader. So what I'm going to be uh, talking to you guys about today, technique-wise, is fishing underneath an indicator um, and how to properly mend um, with a mend called a stack mend. Um, I'm going to be fishing right here where I've got faster currents going between me and my target zone, which is actually this eddy line right here where the, where the uh, flows are going a lot slower than right here by me. So I've got to somehow get my uh, line up above my indicator so my flies will dead drift in the current um, naturally to the, to the fish. So let me, let me demonstrate that to you guys. Um, I'm not doing a lot of back and forth casting like you would with a dry fly. And in this, in this technique, I'm actually uh, just going to be doing some plop casts. So let me show you guys that. So I'm going to come back here and I'm going to kind of cast this into my angle. And then I'm going to plop it up here roughly at 45 degrees. And then I've got to somehow mend my line. If I don't mend my line like I'm doing now, I'm not mending or moving my line, my flies will go too fast in the current because my line is pulling on my flies. So I've got to move my line so my flies will drift in the current naturally. And let me show you guys that. So I'm going to get my angle again by just doing a little flip cast. And now I'm going to come up and accelerate, pop. And now I've got to move my line so that I can get my drift going naturally down through the current there. And if it looks natural and it's going slow enough for the fish, um, they'll grab it. To enhance that a little bit, I'd like to show you some stack mending, which is, is a little bit more intermediate. There's kind of a system that I'm doing here. And what I want to do is, first of all, I want to be able to get my line behind my indicator, which is called a stack mend or just a mend. And I want to get my flies to drift as natural as possible underneath my indicator, parallel downstream with the current going the same speed. I'm going to get my angle, I'm going to cast, I'm going to shake, I'm going to get my angle so I can stack my line and then I'm going to send a sine wave right down the tip of my rod, down through my fly line to right directly behind my indicator. So here it is again. Here's my angle for my cast, I'm going to cast, I'm going to shake some line out, I'm going to get my angle and I'm going to stack. And notice my angle is pointed downstream. That's kind of weird for a lot of people because Oh, missed them. It's kind of weird because we got this current going downstream and normally when people mend, they do this. This is incorrect, by the way. They mend and then they keep their rod up here and it pulls the indicator and the flies out of the lane that we're trying to fish. And it also moves the flies up off the bottom where we're trying to get. So here, here it is incorrect again. I cast and then I mend to the right and I keep my rod here, which pulls on my flies. So this whole thing that we're doing right now is counterintuitive. So check it out. So I've got to actually move downstream with my rod to get my angle. So here it is again. I'm going to cast. I'm going to shake. My angle goes downstream and then I mend behind my indicator and I've got a nice drift going right down the seam right where I want it to go. And I can adjust my mends as it continues down. Putting slack behind there. Boom. Got them. Ooh, I got a stick fish. <laughs> oh, funny. They fight good, by the way. 
<laughs> so here it is, boom, shake, angle, stack, stack. And I'm trying to put some slack behind my indicator to get those flies down on the bottom. That's most important. We gotta get those flies down there. When you're using an indicator, the stack min is, is a great way to min. You can also use a stack min for dry flies and also for uh, uh, streamers as well. But it's most common when you're fishing underneath an indicator, just so we can get those flies directly underneath it. Here it is again, shake, angle, stack. Look at all that slack I have behind there, but we want that. We want that slack under there behind there so we can get a nice drift going. Oh, go! I had him! One of the questions I get when I'm guiding and, and people aren't used to this stack mending is, well, guy, you know, if I have all that slack behind my indicator, how am I going to set the hook? You know, because I have all this slack here. How am I going to how am I going to get in touch with the fish? I just say, well, just lift up and strip your line. You lift your rod up. You know, you, most people have a nine foot rod. This one happens to be 10 foot. But as soon as you lift that rod up and get tight with the fish, um, gets tight with them pretty quickly. Stacking it, stacking it. Now I'm swinging. That's another important thing. You know, as your flies come around, your flies are coming up to the surface and I'm still fishing. A lot of the times people will stop fishing after they've done their drift. I always like to teach people, fish the swing as well. When it swings around, your flies come up to the surface, uh, keep fishing. And even when you're completely downstream like this and you're, you're tight, count to five. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005. Usually you'll get a hit right in there. And then strip in, almost like you're stripping a streamer, but you're stripping these nymphs in. A lot of times you'll get grabs right there as well. So there it is, stack mending. What a great technique to know here on the upper north fork of the Kern River. You can use this technique on any, any river that you fish um, that has pocket water, runs. Um, it's a great technique, stack mending.